Hello and welcome to the shop. Last September I went to the Mid-Ohio Valley Pin Turner Gathering. Now that gathering is preparing to happen again this year, provided there are no issues with the current uh, pandemic situation we've been under. But I have a number of blanks that I purchased at that show and I begin turning them, but I didn't get through all of them. I'm at a point now where I have some spare time and I want to get back to that tray on my maker cart and finish turning some of the incredible blanks that I got from MOV PTG. The blank I'm going to turn today was created by Karen and Daryl May at KD Creative Woodworks and it looks like a Crayola crayon. I think it's incredible. It's going to make a really cool pen because I don't know what's, what's cooler than a pen that looks like a crayon. For this blank to work, I need to make sure that I drill perfectly down the center. So I'm going to use my center finder and I got this from Tay Tools. If I can find a link, I'll put it in the description below. It basically sits on your blank like this. You take a pencil, make a mark, and then rotate the blank. And continue to rotate until you have marked all four sides, or all four corners. Now you can see dead center of your blank. I've grabbed a punch tool, and I'm gonna put that right in the center Make sure we are dead center. Give it a pop. And now we've got a great starting point for our drill bit. I have chucked up a 27 64 inch bit. We will be putting this onto a Sierra style pin kit. This is a brad point bit. It's got a little point on the tip of it and I can center that right in the little dimple that I made with my punch tool. What we're gonna do now is go ahead and drill the blank out making very sure that we clear the uh, material, the debris, from the bit often. And we're going to watch the bit to make sure that it doesn't get too hot because if it gets too hot, the plastic can melt into the bit and then basically it will, it will kind of swell the blank and can burst the blank. So you want to be real careful anytime you're drilling uh, a uh, resin type blank. Letting the bit, just going to check it out, make sure it's actually pretty hot. You'd be surprised how quickly they get hot, but I think we're going to be okay. Just keep clearing. All right, we are through. Move our blank from the vise. Just going to run this little bottle brush through it to clean the interior out. I'll bring it over a little closer where you can see. Got a nice hole. Looks like we went straight down the center. So that's that's awesome. That's what we're shooting for. So we get the perfect look with our pen.
I have the blank between centers on the lathe, and I'm ready to start turning it. want to inspect the blank, make sure there are no issues. I've got quite a few tool marks on this blank. Um, I noticed a little bit of vibration, so I'm concerned that I may need to check my headstock and tailstock alignment. And uh, it resulted in, I don't know how well you can see them, but right there on the black, I'll try to turn it where the light hits it, you can see some white marks, uh, tool marks. They are very mild, and they will come out with the micro mesh. This side is dead on the bushing. This side, I've got a little bit of a lip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, release uh, my tailstock. I'm going to loosen this all up, and then I'm going to put it back together and make sure it's aligned properly. And guess what? We're going to take one more pass, eh, maybe two, uh, very carefully and see if we can't clean this up next to the bushings. Uh, this end feels really good, but we'll just run the entire pin. I got a little bit of a hump right there, uh, and I think that might be caused by... I'm guessing, I don't know the process they use to make these, but I'm guessing this is 3D printed and it's a filled 3D printed mold. Uh, not 100% sure on that, but uh, if that is the case, then obviously when you go from material A to material B, uh, sometimes your uh, the hardness of the material changes and you'll get a concave or a little convex section. So we're gonna be real careful and we're gonna start down here and just take that little hump off. This end looks good, except I need to uh, clean it up. So. Let's, uh, let's loosen up and get everything fixed and ready to go. Just going to twist the bushings, pull them out, twist them around, make sure there's nothing between the, between the bushings. I got stuff all over my hands. <laughs> make sure there's nothing between the bushings and the pin. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to switch ends uh, with our bushings, which basically we just flip the flip the blank around as well and we're going to go ahead and put it back in the bushings. Get this thing tightened down. Look at that. I, I look like a little smear there. That was interesting. Um, Alright, that looks really nice. And now, you know, I may have a little difference. My bushings are getting a little worn. I can feel the lip down here that was at this end. But on this bushing, I can feel just a fraction of a lip on this end. So I wonder if this bushing is uh, getting a little worn uh, beyond its uh, its usefulness. We may have to take a closer look at that one. All right, let's uh, get this spinning and see if we are off kilter just a little bit. Best way to tell is with the old parting tool. That seems nice and smooth. That seems smooth. I'm not noticing anything unusual. Uh, I think the blank is centered, so we're going to go ahead now and make our final pass. Well, you saw it live and in slow motion. Famous last words, one last pass. Uh, at some point, that's going to be on a t-shirt for RJB Woodturner. You can see right here, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a couple little skip marks. As I, as I came across 
from the bushing to the blank and made contact. I skipped, looks like, I don't know, four or five skips there. Do, do, do. I caught, ripped this little section off, and then I re-hit the blank right there, uh, putting a chip there. So I'm not sure why. I didn't feel any vibration when I put my uh, parting tool on there, but for some reason, I was, I was you know, just chattering against the, uh, the blank, and that caused that. We're going to go ahead and clean this up with some denatured alcohol. I'm going to glue this back in. We're going to turn. I still have a lip there, so I think these are very fine. I think they'll disappear. I'm not sure how well you can see them in the video. This one's not going to go anywhere, but if I put a little CA on there to uh, hopefully keep it from chipping any farther, I think I can hide that behind the clip. It doesn't hide the, um, the crayon um, centerpiece there, so let's see what we can do to fix this one up. I think I may have just found the reason why I destroyed my blank. Now I've got another blank on the lathe here that I'm preparing to turn. And uh, before I turned it, I decided to go ahead and put a new edge on my tool. To put an edge on the tool, I take red permanent marker or black, blue, it doesn't matter. And I color the bevel of my tool. And then when I take it to the uh, grinding wheel, um, when the marker is gone, you know that you have a nice smooth surface. Take a look at this. See that red mark right there? That's a chip. Come on over to this side. Look at that. Four or five little chips there. And these had to be worse because I have uh, run this across the grinder uh, two passes, which would have taken that down. So this may be why I had an issue because this side right here, if you roll this over, this is how I came into the blank. Not to mention, remember I talked about the tool marks on that blank. I had tool marks all up and down the blank. And I couldn't figure out why because the material cuts so nicely. Uh, it's such a such a nice material, and I'm wondering if these little chips uh, helped helped to um, cause the issue that I had because with the tool marks I was cutting from right to left, so all those little jagged teeth there would have been rubbing across my blank. So hopefully we figured it out. I'm going to take this back over to the grinding wheel, and we're going to clean those up and get rid of them before we start on this. Uh, blank or before we come back and finish turning our crayon blank. As I mentioned before, I'll be using denatured alcohol. I just want to clean any any garbage out of the blank there and then we're going to clean off including the sides of our little chipped out piece. Make sure we got it nice and clean, don't want anything on it. Alright, let me grab my medium CA. I'm going to set this right here so I don't lose it. There we go. My medium CA was really clogged up, so I removed the top, and I took just this little awl, and I sort of punched it down in the center of here uh, to loosen up the little chunk. And I've got this. This is a tool that I got with a grill, and you're supposed to use it for the orifices on your grill where the gas comes out uh, to keep the, um, you know, keep the gas clear. I guess little spiders and stuff get in there and clog it up. And this is great because I can punch it down inside of here. And there you see, there's my clog right there. There we go. So we'll just wipe that off on a paper towel. And now our glue bottle's good and clean and we'll wipe off the little tool. And uh, I don't have the gas grill anymore, but that tool comes in handy for all types of uh, little jobs like this. And if you're wondering why my CA glue clogs up, here's the culprit. Take a look at this, all the CA from pulling this cap on and off, uh, it gets inside of the cap and dries and the cap doesn't fit securely onto the bottle. Uh, what I do is I have a little glass jar, it's an old mason jar, or actually it's a pickle jar, uh, full of uh, acetone. And when I get done with a bottle of CA, if the cap is in good shape, I'll keep it. And now what I can do is I can throw this into the bottle of acetone, let it set overnight, and I've got other caps that have already been through the acetone process. I can pop one of them onto this bottle, and that will help seal the bottle, and I won't have issues with clogging. Uh, then when this sits in there overnight, I could pull it out tomorrow with a set of long tweezers or a set of forceps and just uh, set it on a paper towel and let it dry completely. And then it's ready to uh, go back on another bottle uh, when that uh, cap gets you know, too nasty. I've brought my cardboard in and I'm going to go ahead now and just get a liberal amount of CA glue right around the edge of this and then all over the, uh, the tube. Set this piece in there. And I wiped my fingers off on my shirt. That is a trade secret 
uh, because all of the dust from the, uh, or all of the ribbons from the turning, they kept sticking to my fingers and I didn't want to get them stuck inside of uh, the gap there where the, the piece mounts to the body. I'm going to use a very tiny clamp here because I noticed that this needed to be pushed in. I think all of the CA that I put on there was causing it to kind of float. So I'm just going to use a really tiny little clamp here and I'm going to clamp it. And then I'm going to back my tailstock off and I'm going to pull this bushing out of the pin because I do not want this bushing to get glued into the tube. That's a whole nother issue. And I'm going to set this thing aside to dry. So once it dries, we'll come back and see if we can't clean it up a little bit. I mentioned earlier the jar of acetone and I use that for cleaning the lid to my CA glue. Um, it's also great for bushings. You can see there's CA on this bushing. Uh, I got it on there as I was uh, trying to fix the pin. I can drop this in the acetone and since that CA is still soft, it hadn't fully dried, it'll come off in pretty much a matter of minutes. Uh, you pull it out, wipe it off really good and uh, this is uh, clean and ready to go back into pin making. I've given the glue ample time to dry. Blank is back on the lathe. You can see, I don't know how well you can see in the video, but those tool marks and that, I need to pay attention to that in the future. That had to be a contributing factor to what happened because everything else was going so smooth. This blank was turning like a dream. I've got the piece put back in. You can see there's a little bit of a, of a hole there or a piece missing there. Uh, on the other side, there's a little bit of a piece missing. So I don't know that we're gonna be able to hide this with a clip but I'm gonna go ahead and finish turning this blank. Um, I did put it back on where the broken piece is on this side because I'm turning from right to left. So that way I'm not gonna come in and catch again. I'm gonna turn off of the blank onto the bushing. I finished turning the blank. I got a nice fit at my bushings. You can see right here is a chip and right here is a chip. Uh, you, if you look closely, you might see a, a glue line right there, but other than that, it really disappeared. I'm so disappointed that, um, that I've got two chips because I can't, I can't figure how I'm gonna cover both of them up. Um, you know, and hide them. One, you could hide with a clip. Two, you can't hide. But I think what I'm going to do is go ahead. I'm going to micro mesh this and finish it up. These blanks are incredible. It just, it, it's just bad karma that that happened to me, and I, I just hate it. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to finish this blank up with the micro mesh, and uh, we're going to come back and take a look at how it looks. We'll get it buffed up, all ready to go, and I'm going to set it aside. And in the future. Maybe I could come up with an idea how to fix that, but it'll be it'll be ready to go uh, if that day ever comes. So I've turned the lathe down, and I'm just going to go ahead and micro mesh the blank. I'm not going to make you watch this entire process. I mean, you see how slow it is. It takes time. You just want to continually work the blank, get all the tool marks out, uh, as many of the fine scratches as you can see with your eye. But we'll go ahead and stop this. I'll pull up to the black area, and you can already see, I can already tell a difference with the tool marks just from what little bit I've done. So we'll shut the camera off. We'll finish micro meshing, and I'll come back and show it to you prior to buffing. I am now more disappointed than ever that I blew this blank apart. I mean, if you take a look at it, all I've done is micro mesh it. And just look at the surface. Look at that line, how clear it is. That is the fluorescent light above my table. And it just, it's perfectly clear across the blank. 
the blank is shining. I haven't even polished it yet. Um, I don't know. I need to come up with some way to take care of this little chip and this little chip. That just breaks my heart. But uh, we're going to put this aside and I'm going to think on it and see if there's some way that uh, I can find to um, take care of that and be able to to uh, put this blank onto a pin. And normally what I would do is if I cut off a piece of material, I can patch a piece of material in, but with this blank, um, it just was slightly longer than the tube length. So I centered the tube so that my lines were, you know, were relatively centered. And uh, so there was just dust that came off of it where I sanded it off. So really nice looking blank. I love these blanks. I was so looking forward to having this uh, pink blank on a pen. This, just a, the crayon look on a pen to me was just kind of a, it was kind of a cool idea. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I want to use it as a platform to get something across to everyone. This is as far as I went with this blank. It's not going to get pressed into a kit because of the damage that I personally did to it. Um, I'm disappointed about that, but this type of thing happens even to people who turn a ton of pins, they occasionally will have an issue. Now, people that do videos may cover that issue up and may not show it to you. I try to be upfront and transparent when I have issues because I want you to understand you never get perfect where every pin is perfect. You get better to where you make nicer pins, you learn newer techniques to make your pin making more enjoyable, but you're never perfect. None of us are. This type of thing happens. I'm going to put this aside and I'm hoping one day to come up with a way or an idea to maybe fix those little nicks in the pin. I'd really like to thank you for joining me in the shop today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening. I've got some bonus footage for you. I believe I've come up with an idea to fix this blank. If you take a look at the blank, you'll notice it has two chips in it. One right there, and this is where the piece came out, and you can't really see it, but the piece kind of went down into the blank like this, and there's the other side of the blank, and there's the chip on that side. Now my idea is, with a Sierra pin, the front section snaps in, and it generally c contacts with the cap, and that's what allows you to turn the pin and to eject and retract the ink. But look how much play I have in that cap. I can push it up to there. And what that does, if you take a look, look how much room I have available at the end of the blank. So I'm thinking if I take this back over to my disc sander, put it in my sanding jig, and I'm gonna sand down just to where both of these chips disappear. Once they disappear, we'll measure out that distance on the opposite side, we'll sand down so that we keep it as even as possible. I should then be able to press a cap into the tube, insert the front nib section of our Sierra pin, and we should have fixed this pin. Yes, so it'll be a tiny bit shorter, but it should work just as well as a normal length pin. I was able to kind of eyeball the blank. I didn't get too critical on each side, but if you take a close look at it, it looks pretty darn even to me. i get it up here close to the camera. And we're gonna rotate it, and I want you to look at both ends. I don't see a single marked mark on either end. It looks like I've cleaned it up really nicely. So let's get it pressed into a kit. I am gonna take a close look at the blank to see if I can determine which end was the chipped end? Here it is, it's this end here. And I'm looking closely, and it looks like the only spot that I can see, there's one little hairline crack right there, but it's on the back of the pin, so that's perfect, because if I put the clip on the back, when it lays on a desk, it's gonna lay with the uh, Crayola pattern up. So I really like that. I think that's gonna work out real well. We're gonna assemble it just like this.
take a look very closely. I'm trying to get the light on there to where you can see flaws in the blank and that looks amazing. Like I said, there was a glue line that I saw, but it's under the clip. The rest of the blank looks fantastic. It looks really even on both ends. I'm happy with that. Let's get the nib section assembled and see how it fits. actually fits very nicely. There's no issue with ejecting or retracting the ink. It's just as smooth as it would be on a normal size pen. This pen is probably about uh, maybe an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch shorter than a normal Sierra, but still it makes for a nice size pen. You're not going to have any issue writing with it.